Let's annotate with SpinSolve. First, let's discuss loading our sample into the NMR. Get excited. I know I am. You will remove the spin collar, holding it by the top. Then, remove the water standard. Next, take your sample and gently thread it through the top of the spin collar and pull down through the bottom until it basically clicks in place. Next comes the leveling gauge. You will notice that when you place your NMR tube in the leveling gauge, there'll be a small gap pushed down to remove aforementioned gap. Now your sample is at the appropriate height to be nestled in the magnetic field of the NMR. Great success. To run the sample, simply enter a title under the sample box. We recommend an identifier and then underscore your sample name. The solvent is generally going to be chloroform and a quick scan is usually good enough to resolve our samples. Then press start. Within 10 seconds, you will have a visualization of your molecule. Cool. Now then, we're going to go through how to use SpinSolve to annotate our spectra. And we're going to look at two different spectra, starting with 4,4-dimethoxybenzoin. Essentially, we'll see this is a three-step process, moving our reference peak, peak picking, and integrating. Let's start with the reference peak. To do this, press ref for reference, then drag the red line right into the middle of the TMS peak. It will be generally the most upfield singlet, most to the right. Then, in the box at the bottom, make sure to type zero and press apply, and this will shift our TMS peak to zero where it belongs. In proton NMR, all chemical shifts are reported in ppm relative to the TMS peak at zero. So now, to get those ppm, we can press pp for peak pick. A red line will appear. Notice that if we drag it too high, we don't get any information. On the other hand, if we drag it too low, whoa, information overload. Essentially, the red line is the threshold at which any peak that extends above it will get a ppm shift value. To make this step easier, you can scroll with the scroll wheel on the mouse to help make these peaks larger. Then we can bring our red line down. Anything that's really prominent above the baseline we want to get. Now we've zoomed in so much, we can see some trace solvents in here. They're not necessary. So we're going to set the line here. You can play with the prominence. If you're not getting enough information, you can drag it to the right. If you're getting too much, you can drag it to the left. And don't worry, if the numbers in red are overlapping, when you print, they will space out. So do not worry about that. Press apply. And now, in the words of the great poet and philosopher, John Bon Jovi, whoa, we're two thirds of the way there. The last step is integrating. Bringing up our very symmetrical molecule, we'll notice that there are three distinct sets of equivalent protons. We have these four that are adjacent to the electron withdrawing ketones. We have highlighted in blue these four, which are adjacent to the electron donating ether groups. And then finally, we have these six protons on the methoxy groups. Any of these three distinct signals would work for calibrating the integrals, but we're going to go with this singlet over here. We're going to highlight it and make sure that our peak calibration value is set to 6 because this singlet at 3.9 ppm corresponds to the 6 protons attached on the CH3 groups. Now I'm going to highlight this doublet here, which corresponds to 4 protons, and this doublet here, which corresponds to the other 4 protons next to the electron withdrawing ketones. And notice that if I change the relative size of my calibration peak, it changes the values of our doublets. These do not need to be perfect. These are experimental data, so you don't have to worry about getting the numbers exactly at 4.00 and 4.00. As long as they're close to the whole number we're looking for, you should be good to go. And there we have our fully annotated spectrum. Yay! You can use control and drag with the mouse to zoom in. Or if you accidentally zoom in too far, you can press L to undo aforementioned zoom. And now we're going to go through the same process, but with a different molecule, cinnamic acid. If the previous user's annotations are on the screen, press clear to get rid of them. Now we're going to move our TMS peak to zero PPM. Remember, press ref, drag the red line right into the middle of the TMS peak. Uh, there we go. Type zero in the box at the bottom and press apply. One third of the way done. Next, we're going to peak pick. So all of our peaks are now in their proper place with respect to TMS. 
I'm just going to use the scroll wheel to make it a little bit easier to see all of our peaks. Ooh, ah, then press PP for peak pick. And whoop, that's too low, too many numbers. All right, right here seems to give us all pertinent data. These two peaks are just sidebands from the TMS peak. Prominent singlets can sometimes create these artifacts on NMR. I don't really need those. Now let's do the integrals. Let's take another look at our molecule here. So let's bring up cinnamic acid. And there we go. The marked proton here overlaps with the aromatic region, so all six protons are overlapping. So in this case, we're gonna use this doublet to calibrate off of. It corresponds to one hydrogen. So setting the calibration value, we'll highlight that. And then here, we'll try to just get that doublet. Again, it's overlapping with our aromatic region. That's okay. We can move around our boundaries a little bit. So if you click and drag when the green box appears, you can change the boundaries of your integrals. And I'm gonna move them around until we get to about one. That doublet corresponds to the hydrogen adjacent to the aromatic ring, and these five are the aromatic protons themselves. And then finally, we'll highlight our carboxylic acid hydrogen. Oftentimes, carboxylic acids create kind of funky peaks um, just because of hydrogen bonding and the fact that they are labile protons. They don't always integrate reliably, and oftentimes they'll spread out over a larger region. Let's zoom in just to make this a little bit nicer looking, and look at our beautiful spectrum. To finish, we'll move our tallest peak right below the numbers up there and go to PDF to print. Thank you for watching, and happy NMRing!